This video is brought to you by Ultium 365 via the World Designs Electronics and Octopod, the fastest search engine for electronic parts. Recently, I got Raspberry Pi Pico W from Sun Founder at quite a reasonable price with free shipping. You can also try their ultimate starter kit based on Raspberry Pi Pico W. Anyway, there are lots of things I'm going to cover in this video. I'll be comparing Raspberry Pi Pico with Raspberry Pi Pico Wireless. I will also explain how to program Raspberry Pi Pico W using Arduino IDE. And I will also explain how to use Raspberry Pi Pico W with Adafruit IoT platform for sensor monitoring. I have already made several videos on Raspberry Pi Pico and in all those videos I used MicroPython. So if you want to learn how to program Raspberry Pi Pico using MicroPython, then I highly recommend watch my previous videos because in this video, I will be only using Arduino IDE. The main difference between Raspberry Pi Pico and Raspberry Pi Pico W is that the Raspberry Pi Pico W has Wi-Fi connectivity, while the Raspberry Pi Pico does not have any Wi-Fi connectivity. The remaining specifications for both the Raspberry Pi Pico and Raspberry Pi Pico wireless are exactly the same. As you can see, the layout of the pins is also exactly the same. The other difference is that in the Raspberry Pi Pico, the onboard LED is on the GPIO 26, while in the Raspberry Pi Pico W, the onboard LED is on the GPIO 0. The GPIO 26 in the Raspberry Pi Pico W is reserved for SPI communication with the wireless module. In order to use Raspberry Pi Pico W with Arduino IDE, first you will need to install the Raspberry Pi Pico W board. For this, you will need to copy this link, which you can copy from my website electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. Next, open the Arduino IDE. Go to the file menu and then to preferences. Paste the link. As you can see, I have already pasted the link. If you have other boards links, then simply put a comma and then paste the link. Finally, click on the OK button, but as I have already pasted the link, so I will click on the Cancel button. Next, go to the Tools menu and then to Board and click on the Boards Manager. Search for the Raspberry Pi Pico. As you can see, I have already installed the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now again go to Tools, then Board and check if you can see Raspberry Pi Pico W. If you can see the Raspberry Pi Pico W, then congrats you are done with the hard part. Anyway, the Arduino IDE is ready. For the demonstration purposes, I'm going to use DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor with the Raspberry Pi Pico W. This is going to be an IoT Internet of Things based project. Is I'll be using Adafruit I.O with Raspberry Pi Pico W for monitoring the temperature and humidity values from anywhere in the world. So first let's go ahead and take a look at the circuit diagram. Ultium 365 lets you hold the fastest design reviews ever. Share your designs from anywhere and with anyone with a single click. It's easy. Leave a comment taking your teammate and they will instantly receive an email with a link to the design. Anyone you invite can open the design using a web browser. Using the browser interface, you are able to comment, markup, cross probe, inspect, and more. Comments are attached directly to the project, making them viewable within Ultim Designer as well as through the browser interface. Design, share, and manufacture all in the same space with nothing extra to install or configure. Connect to the platform directly from Ultim Designer without changing how you already design electronics. Ultim 365 requires no additional licenses and comes included with your subscription plan. Get real-time component insights as you design with Octopart built into Ultium 365. Octopart is the fastest search engine for electronic parts and gives you the most up-to-date part data like specs, data sheets, gate models, and how much the part costs at different amounts, etc. right in the design environment. So you can focus on your designs. Links to the Ultium Designer Ultium 365 and Octopart are given in the description. The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Sun Founder and Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. 
The voltage and ground pins of the DHT element temperature and humidity sensor are connected with the 3.3 volt and ground pins of the Raspberry Pi Pico WO, while the S pin or data pin of the DHT element sensor is connected with the GPIO pin 16. I connected the DHT element sensor with the Raspberry Pi Pico wireless, and now let's start with the Adafruit I.O. For the dashboard designing and Adafruit I.O., you will need to watch my previous video on the ESP8266 DHT11 and Adafruit I.O. is I'm going to use the same dashboard. So for the step-by-step -step explanation, watch my previous video. I will provide a link in the description. Anyway, once your dashboard is ready, then you can start programming your Raspberry Pi Pico W using Arduino IDE. So let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. This is the code that I wrote for the ESP8266 and Adafruit I.O. And I have already explained this code. Whereas this is the code that I wrote for the Raspberry Pi Pico W. The code that I wrote for the Raspberry Pi Pico W is the modified version of the same exact program. The only changes I made are is this time I'm not using the OLED display module and the 5 volt buzzer. So I deleted the related libraries and code. Instead of using the ESP8266 Wi-Fi library, I'm using the Wi-Fi library. If you have been using the ESP8266 board, then you should have this Wi-Fi library or else you will have to install this. For this, you can watch my getting start video on the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. Anyway, you can see I'm using the same DHT library and the same Adafruit libraries. Previously, I was using D4 pin on the ESP8266, while this time I'm using GPIO pin 16 on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. The OLED display module code is deleted. I'm using the same Wi-Fi credentials. The Adafruit I.O. settings are 100% the same. Code inside the setup function is exactly the same. And the code inside the loop function is exactly the same. The reason I'm using the same code which I wrote for the Node MCO ESP8266 with the Raspberry Pi Pico W.O. is I wanted to explain that you can convert all your ESP8266 or ESP32 related projects into Raspberry Pi Pico W.O. based projects. I have hundreds of videos on Node MCO ESP8266. You can select any project, copy code from there and use it with your Raspberry Pi Pico W.O. So that's all about the programming. Now let's go ahead and watch the Raspberry Pi Pico W and Adafruit I.O. base temperature and humidity monitoring system in action. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in the next episode and thanks for watching.